During this holiday season, give your loved ones a gift that keeps on giving for the rest of their life. Torpedo Pot is the only affordable self-growing flower pot that ensures your future food survival. All you do is add soil, seeds, and seedlings to the flower pot and watch your plants grow. Torpedo Pot can grow nutritious food in such abundance and variety that you can produce more food than your local farm. Visit www.torpedopot.com. Greetings, brothers and sisters. My name is Osid Bonchild, and I hope you all doing fine, doing just all right. And today, let's take a look at how Queen Nzinga of Angora fought and held off Portuguese control for over 30 good years. The Portuguese were the earliest European colonialists to settle in Africa, owing largely to the fascination of the ever adventurous Portuguese prince. Henry the Navigator. From the island of Azowa down to the region of Guinea, it didn't take long for the Portuguese to establish a colony in Angora, precisely in 1570. However, the Portuguese's overall control of Angora was not as anticipated. It was not because they didn't have superior technology and weaponry which they had always used. To much success, it was much more of the bravery, military strategy, and diplomatic acumen exemplified by one of the greatest warrior queens in African history, Queen Nzinga of Ndongo and Matamba kingdoms of Angora. Queen Nzinga was born in 1583, just about the same time the transatlantic slave trade was booming and the Portuguese were gradually establishing control over Angora. Most of the local chiefs assisted the Portuguese either in slave raiding or taking possession of lands, and in return receiving items such as millers, guns, even wines and other material items. It should be noted that England and France had joined the profitable corn business and Portugal wanted to dominate Angola as soon as possible. Angola Kiasamba was Zinga's father while her mother was Gwengela Chakombe. They ruled as the overlords in Ndongo and Matamba over the Mbundu people. Nzinga had three other siblings, her sister Chifunji, Mukumbu, and brother Mbandi. History has it that Angora was so called because of the Portuguese called the land Ngola, with reference to Nzinga's father. This was later changed to Angora. Legends have it that at the time of the birth, Nzinga, Nzinga's umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck. The reason why she was named Nzinga. A wise old woman also prophesied that she would become a great queen later in life. Indeed, she was very smart and intelligent, such that her father took her with him to state meetings, functions, and even battles. Her father fought several battles to protect his domain from the Portuguese. She became a military strategist and a warrior, but her involvement in government did not come until her father's death. Ngora Mbandi, her brother, took over the reign of government and gave Nzinga her first state assignment to act as the envoy in a peace conference with the Portuguese. The fight between the Portuguese and the Ndongo people had gotten to a stage where peace needed to be broken. The Portuguese had other arrangements in mind and this became possible to do easily at the conference. The governor, Jao Kori de Sousa, and his entourage were all seated but left no seat for Zinga or another member of the outrage. Zinga's maids quickly rolled a mat for her and one of the male servants bent to form a human bench which she sat on. 
the Portuguese marveled at the power she commanded among the people and it was to her credit that she got a good deal at a conference for her people. Because of her assassination and her association with her late father, she could speak Portuguese and write as well. This also gave her a lot of leverage. She succeeded in negotiating a peace treaty. But the Portuguese went back on their promise of the treaty and attacked Ndongo. Mbandi died in the process in 1624 and Nzinga, although not popular support because she was female, became the queen. It was also rumored that she killed Mbandi and then her son, who was a regent, to be able to lead her people. Thereafter, she took on the title of a king and led people to fight the Portuguese bravery. She repelled the Portuguese on a fierce and destructive attack and actually defeated them on some occasions. However, in 1625, she was defeated and escaped behind mountains in Matamba. She later allied with the Dutch and moved to Kavanga in former Ndongo. She defeated the Portuguese at Ngolome and later at the Battle of Kombi, her sister, who had been spying for her in former Ndongo, was killed and in a massive assault by the Portuguese, Nzinga retreated to Matamba. The battle between Nzinga and the Portuguese was long and both parties became battle weary. Thus, a new peace treaty was signed. Nzinga proclaimed her territory, a free country where all lived equally and she became renowned for her bravery and heroism in fighting slave trade. She resettled former slaves and protected her people from oppression. She died in 1663 until today she is known for her compassion for the people, sterling leadership qualities, a field martial and a command of successful battles with the Portuguese. In her honor, a major street was named after her and a statue built in Rwanda, the capital of Angora. Hey, what do you think and what do you have to say about how Queen Nzinga of Angora fought and held off the Portuguese control for over 30 years? My name is Osi the Bone Child and thank you so much for watching dear brothers and sisters. I'll be seeing you in another video but until next time, please just take care of yourself. Living in America as a black person, you recognize there is one set of laws for you and one set of laws for those, especially in the white community. In our book, Passive Aggressive Racism in the System of White Supremacy, I take you through times in my life when I first started noticing white supremacy. We teach you how to recognize it, identify it, and also counter it in our book. This book is a beginner's course for those that are just starting to wake up and open their eyes to see the system of white supremacy. As a black American person, you must understand this system because this system is life or death to you. How you handle it, how you deal with it, it can affect your mental health if you don't understand this system. Pick up our book, Pass Aggressive Racism and the System of White Supremacy today on Amazon.